Okay, so now we're starting to get into something interesting, which is uh, sensitivity analysis. So it goes without saying that most economic evaluations involve some estimate uh, in the parameters that are going to make up our assessment as to whether we're going to go ahead and do the project or not. And, you know, it, it happens so often that once we make those uh, estimates, uh, make those assumptions that we never question whether those assumptions are valid or not. And, and you know, while we hope that we're close to, uh, you know, our estimates are close to the, the numbers that are actually going to be realized, they may be off by some amount or not. And the beauty of a sensitivity analysis is, is we're able to evaluate the uncertainty in those individual parameters that we're going to base our assessment on. And so, you know, it, it is a sophistication that is missed by a lot of uh, individuals. Uh, and it is something that really needs to be considered because if something is highly sensitive uh, to a particular parameter, you might want to look into it a little bit more to find out what is the likelihood or the probability that that assumption is going to be wrong. And, and so what a sensitivity analysis will do is give you some feeling as to some feeling of confidence in your assessment, but also highlight areas of concern that you may want to augment your study before making a final decision. So some of the parameters that uh, you may have estimated that we want to consider in our sensitivity analysis might be prices or interest rates, uh, magnitude, timings of cash flows. Uh, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of uh, parameters that we're going to assume a, as we prepare our business case. And so uh, you need to look at each of those and figure out which ones are most likely to cause you problems if they're wrong. So sensitivity analysis develops an understanding of how the uncertainty of these estimates can affect the outcome of the project evaluation. Um, we examine how sensitive project performance measures are to changes in values of estimated parameters. So if you're, say you've done a net present value assessment of your project, and it is based on an assumption of, let's say, something as simple as the consumer price index. Now, it's been really stable for a long time. Uh, but before that, there was a period of time where it wasn't stable at all or, or it was much higher than, than it is now. And, and so perhaps in making that assessment, you want to know, well, if we're off by half a percent on our estimate of the CPI in your particular uh, index um, area, you know, is that going to affect the net present value? Is it going to go from being a positive number to a negative number, in which case my project isn't viable for fairly small changes in the CPI? So that's the type of information that we hope to get out of it. So the tool that we're going to use for this mostly is the sensitivity graph, uh, which illustrates the sensitivity of a particular specific measure, i.e. present worth or annual worth, to one at a time changes in any uncertain parameter within the project, but it only allows for adjusting one parameter at a time. We can overlay graphs so we can see multiple parameters uh, uh, and how sensitive they are uh, at the same time, but we're not comparing them uh, one to the other or any interdependencies that may also uh, be affected. And now, a break-even analysis uh, is able to answer such questions is what production level is necessary in order for the present worth or net present value of the project to be greater than zero uh, and can give insights into comparisons between projects. And we'll look at that after, but we're, we're going to go through the sensitivity analysis um, and sensitivity graphs first, and, and then we'll finish with uh, scenario analysis. But again, we'll do that in a, a separate uh, video. So sensitivity graphs are, are used to assess uh, the effects of one at a time changes in key parameters. Uh, so basically we start with the base case. So these are the values that we have assumed uh, and there's no error. We assume there's no error in it. We go ahead, we calculate our net present value uh, as an example, and, and that's our base case. Uh, and then what we need to do is while holding all of the other parameters uh, constant, we're able to look at the one parameter that we want to check its sensitivity on, and we adjust it up and down by a percentage error. And 
figure or recalculate our net present value or whatever parameter is that we're using to evaluate. And then we can build that into a graph, which is called your sensitivity graph. So the easiest way to see this is to do a, a quick example. And so um, in this case, uh, we have a, a cash flow uh, timeline laid out. It's basically a capital investment uh, project uh, outlay of $120,000 in year zero. It's going to see a series of increasing uh, cost savings coming back to us uh, over the, the 10 years of the project and finally a, a salvage value at the end of $5,000. Um, now there's an ongoing O&M outlay to uh, function it uh, of $10,000 every year, and that's all going to get uh, uh, worked in. So we have uh, on this slide, we have the net present value formula for this particular cash flow laid out. And, and just so you can see the bits, I mean, uh, we, we've already talked about calculating net present values in a simplistic way. This isn't about calculating net present values, but I will highlight which terms represent which parts of the cash flow. Um, so we see here, so the initial cash outlay not discounted uh, represented in the formula. Uh, then we see a uniform uh, component of the annual annuity, if you will. So the $15,000 uh, in um, savings and less the $10,000 in uh, O&M expenses. Uh, lump sum together as an annuity. Uh, we then deal with our gradient as the $5,000 a year starting uh, uh, really year one at zero and year two at five. And then finally, we have our um, uh, salvage value in, in year 10. So what we need to do is to take this formula then that we've done out and isolate the term that we're interested in. So we're concerned about errors in our cost savings estimates uh, by, they, they may be off by up to 10%. So what we need to do is to isolate those cost savings terms uh, and uh, see where they are. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an error term. And so we see here, so the $15,000 component of the annuity is part of that cost savings. So we're gonna put in an error as a percent. So one plus the error. So the current net present value would be the same thing as substituting in zero for the error. And we can go plus or minus any percentage change to, to get a, uh, a new valuation. As well as the $5,000 a gradient is also part of the cost savings term. So we put in a, an error component there. And then really all we have to do is we have to substitute in different values of percentage errors. So, you know, say negative 10%, negative 5%, plus 5%, plus 10%, and recalculate and build ourselves a, a table of how net present value will change for errors in our estimate of cost savings. And so what we do is we substitute then in the, those values, we build our table, we have our table showing up down here. So we did five trials, if you will, or five runs uh, from minus 10%, minus 5%, uh, the base value, which we already did, uh, 5% and 10%. And we get different values for present worth, depending on how uh, wrong we were in our estimate of our cost savings. And then we're able to graph it out and see that in, indeed our project uh, valuation and uh, viability is very sensitive to any errors that we may have made in our cost savings estimates. And, and indeed, we can see that if we are off by 6%, if we have a, an error of minus 6% on our cost savings, we actually change the viability of our project from being viable to not being viable and now being a cost uh, loser or uh, sorry, uh, a losing project as compared to a, a winning project. So this is a sensitivity graph. This shows it for one particular uh, parameter or estimate, which in this case was our estimate of cost savings. So let's do uh, another example, something a little bit more complicated, if you will, where we're going to do a whole series of uh, 
parameters that, that have been estimated and, and overlay those graphs. So in this case, we have a company, St. Lawrence Power, it's replacing a, a steam plant with a new cogeneration plant, and that's going to provide it both steam and electrical power for its operations. Uh, and so we're going to get the summary data of the, uh, the cash flows. I mean, we're not going to do the details of the the cash flows, but we'll get the summary data. And so the question then is, what is the present worth of the incremental investment in the cogen plant? And what impact of five and 10% increases or decreases to each of the parameters that were considered in uh, our estimate uh, to the problem? And, and so here is the net present value calculated out. Uh, I'm not gonna go into it. It's currently on the base case has a present worth of a little over a million dollars. Uh, and what I've done up is my, a table. And so this table is basically doing uh, horizontally what we did in our little table on the last slide. So we have the base case, uh, and then we've modified the parameters plus or minus uh, five and 10% uh, for each of those parameters. And then we'd have to recalculate the present value to see um, uh, how sensitive the, pre the, the net present value or the present worth is to it. And so here we see the sensitivity graphs laid over top of each other. Uh, so we have the present worth or net present value going up the, the vertical axis. We have our errors, uh, minus 10, minus 5, 0, plus 5, plus 10 percent along the bottom. And each of the parameters is providing a graph, a sensitivity graph, uh, for um, uh, how it's going to affect the net present value. And of course, we see the base case is that point in the middle where everything comes together. So that's the base case. Like I say, the point in the middle, it dominates it. And then each of these graphs colored will show which parameter is being assessed. So our first cost, our initial investment is the blue row on the, the table, if you will, the blue line on the graph. It shows that it is sensitive to a degree, slightly sensitive, if you will, to estimates and first cost. Uh, then if we look at the annual O&M costs, uh, that would be the red uh, one. And we see that it's not really sensitive at all to changes in O&M costs, very slightly, you know, uh, only modest changes uh, to the net present value for o changes in O&M costs up to 10%. Uh, on the annual savings and electrical costs, however, we see it as extremely sensitive to our estimates and electrical savings. So if our electrical savings are off, if we are not saving what we hope to save, then we're going to change the viability of our project fairly quickly. And, and then that begs the question, so why or what would make our estimate wrong? Is it because our usage is different than what we're estimating? Or is it because um, electricity costs on the, the market are different? And uh, so, yeah, that, that uh, begs the question, okay, so what went into our estimate? What is, you know, what is the likelihood that it is wrong? And what's causing it to be wrong? And is there anything we can do to refine our estimate? Or are we going into a risky uh, proposal? And finally, we have uh, an estimate for our uh, minimum annual rate of return is the green line. And it's kind of uh, tracks along with first cost with a, a slight, you know, some uh, sensitivity, uh, but not as sensitive as the electricity savings, which would certainly have my uh, concern. So some of the benefits of sensitivity graphs uh, absolutely can be used uh, to select key parameters in an economic analysis and display those. Easy to communicate that information, gets it across fairly easily. We can see uh, what would happen if we're wrong. Now we have to answer the question or ask the question, why would we be wrong? And what's the likelihood of us being wrong? And is there anything we can do about it? Like you would do with any risk exposure that you would have in your project. Um, any shortcomings of sensitivity graphs, they are only valid over the range of parameters that you've displayed. So again, your assumptions as to uh, what range of values you're interested in looking at. Uh, and they don't consider any of the interdependencies uh, between the various parameters themselves. Some going up might force others down. There may be an interdependency there. We're not going to see that in this type of an assessment.